Hello there folks and welcome back to Bullets for Bucks. My name's Steven and today I'm going to do a review on the Christensen Ridgeline and 300 PRC. Now we're going to take the barreled action out of the stock so you can see the inside of the stock and the underside of the receiver. We're going to do some testing on the trigger and other aspects of the rifle. But we're going to start off by going over some basic specifications so let's dive right in. The barrel is, uh, the internal barrel core is made of 416R stainless steel. The uh, barrel is wrapped then in carbon fiber that is aerospace grade or aero grade. And the uh, does come with a radial muzzle brake, which is nice. Not all rifles in its class come with a muzzle brake, but this one does. Um, the barrel itself is hand lapped for increased accuracy and button rifled. The barrel is free floating. The action itself or receiver is made in stainless steel and you can get it either in just stainless steel or you can get it with a bronze serif coat. Um, it does take Remington 700 optics bases so it's very easy to find bases for this uh, firearm and it does come in a long and short action version. The short action comes in, I believe, at a starting weight of 6.2 pounds or 6.3 pounds. It does feature an enlarged ejection port, as well as it features the Trigger Tech Field Trigger. So the Trigger Tech Trigger is made in Canada, and it's an excellent trigger to use. Has a nice clean break, and we'll test that and give you a little bit of the feel a little bit later on here. The bottom metal is made of billeted aluminum metal, so it is a fully metal trigger guard and floor plate. In the magnum capacity, it holds three rounds. In the short action, it can hold four rounds. The stock on this comes in three different color patterns and is made of real carbon fiber, which is very, very nice. It's an excellent slim style stock designed for backcountry hunting, and it has a good fit, feel, and finish to it. It features stainless steel pillar bedding, and it also has spot bedding epoxy. It features a very nice recoil pad, that does a good job mitigating felt recoil. The, the Christensen Ridgeline comes in almost every popular offering out there. And the 300 PRC does come with a one and eight twist. The 6.5 Creedmoor comes with a one and eight twist. And the long action calibers, it comes in 26 and 24 inch barrels, depending on what you desire. And in short action, it comes in 24 uh, inch barrel, but the 243 is available in a 20 inch barrel. And then the 450 Bushmaster is available in a 20 inch barrel as well. Starting with the butt stock, we have a very nice soft butt stock, as mentioned earlier. I would say it's it's not as firm as a Ruger American buttstock, but it's certainly softer than a Tika T3X buttstock. Then coming forward, we have a swivel sling stud. Um, we do not have QD mounts built into that. This is something to note, and I would like to see that in the future on this rifle. You have a traditional uh, palm weld. It's not super, super large. The palm swell just feels good. It's relatively slim in the hand. Um, per personally, I do prefer a larger one, but this one does get the job done. Then coming forward, you have a removable uh, aluminum bolt knob that has knurling, so it's easy to grasp. It does feature a 90 degree bolt lift on it. The bolt lift on it is pretty smooth, but it is tight. And on the way down, it does have a little bit of catch. However, it's a very nice bolt lift. The bolt handle itself is hollowed out and has holes machined through it to shed weight. And it does come with a real metal bolt shroud that is fluted as well to shed weight. It has a two position safety to the rear. It does not lock the bolt. It just prevents you from firing the rifle as it locks out the trigger mechanism. Pushing it forward, you can operate the bolt and fire the weapon. I would like to see this come with a safety that it locks out the bolt when it's on safe. That way you don't accidentally have the bolt uh, come out of battery while you're in the field going through thick brush. It features a push tab designed to release the bolt which is quite nice and it is easy to re, uh, remove the bolt. You just hold down on that tab and remove the bolt. When you go to stick it in, you do not have to push down back on the tab. You can simply just insert the bolt with the lugs in the appropriate place. The uh, bolt is fluted, which is very nice. It's fully spiral fluted throughout and it features a two lug design and a Seiko style extractor, but a two plunger ejectors. Let me repeat that. This comes with two plunger ejectors. You don't see that on every rifle, so you don't have to worry about this thing ejecting rounds. And it does have a hefty extractor. So very nice two lug bolt design. The receiver 
is stamped made in Gunnison, Utah, USA. So it's nice to know that this rifle is manufactured and made in the United States. It does have some machined out flat area on the receiver as well. And the receiver is made of stainless steel. So it's quite lightweight. It has four ported holes on the top so that you can put that Remington 700 style base on there to mount a scope. Now looking at the trigger guard, it is all aluminum. It has a nice like hard anodized finish on it, so it's scratch and abrasion resistant. It does have the Christensen name, uh, like laser engraved on the bottom, which gives it a nice look. You push a button on the front of the trigger guard or in the front of the trigger guard, and it releases that floor plate. It does feature a actual metal floor plate, and then it has a metal spring inside of it. The follower, however, however is plastic, though it does just seem to be made well. When running the bolt, it's quite smooth. I would say it's almost as smooth as a Tika or a Seika, but not quite as smooth. Um, it does have a little bit more slop in it than say a Seekins Havoc, but as you can see, it easily passes the glide test and it operates very easily. I would say it's just a little bit rattly and a little bit sloppier than some, but that partially is due to the fluting on the bolt. Anyways, still a very nice bolt still operates very smoothly and nicely in the receiver and i do like it all right it broke at just three and a half pounds so a little bit heavy but it is very simple to adjust um, now let's go ahead and take a look at the fit and feel it has grooves long ways down the trigger blade it has a very curved trigger blade so it's easy to grip you know if you had wet fingers or gloves on it's a single stage trigger Okay, no perceivable creep, little to no over travel, brakes very crisp and clean, definitely an excellent trigger from Trigger Tech. And like I said, this is the Trigger Tech field trigger, which is advertised to adjust down to two and a half pounds, but I actually have gotten them down to two and a quarter pounds. Of course, follow all the safety protocols, precautions, and guidelines, um, and be aware that a firearm is dangerous. All right, so now we've removed the barreled action from the stock on this Christensen Ridge line. We're gonna just take a look at the bottom side of the receiver and how it's designed. First thing I notice is that it has a very substantial tang that comes out. It's all one piece, part of the receiver, has nice clean threading, and this is where the rear action screw sits. Then you have the Trigger Tech field trigger held in with two substantial size pins and the trigger has the adjustment set screw right in front of the blade to adjust that down to two and a half pounds. But like I mentioned earlier, sometimes those will actually adjust down to two and a quarter pounds. Coming forward, you have very nice machining job. There's no machining marks whatsoever on the metal. It's an extremely clean job um, in the magazine recess area and where it picks up the rounds from the magazine. Uh, coming forward to the front action screw, it sits behind the recoil lug. And once again, it is clean. There is a little bit of bedding material stuck to the bottom of the receiver where they actually bedded the front and rear uh, part of the receiver. So they bedded around the front uh, recoil lug and around the tang. And there's just a little tiny bit of material stuck to it. That's really not a concern, no big deal. And I'd rather see that um, as the bedding looks good than no bedding material at all and them have not bedded it. Um, coming forward, the um, recoil lug on this um, Christensen is designed exactly the same essentially as a Remington 700 where the recoil lug is sandwiched between the barrel and the receiver. I would like to see um, or do like to see where the recoil lug is one piece part of the actual receiver where it's one piece of metal. I think that lends itself to better um, reliability and structurally is more sound. However, Remington 700, back when they had good Q and C, um, proved that this platform can be extremely reliable and accurate. On the side of the receiver, you do have a pressure port on the right hand side, um, which not all rifles have in that exact position. This one's position is kind of farther back. Um, like I said, beautiful, beautiful uh, machining job. 
really clean lines. On that uh, left side, it is machined out, and they do have the Christian Shin uh, logo embedded into the metal there. Um, so um, I do like that this has the uh, bolt release as a separate piece, not part of the trigger assembly, which is nice. Um, so excellent receiver um, from Christensen Arms. All right, folks, so now that we've taken a look at the barreled action, let's take a look at the stock. Now, the stock is advertised to be a carbon fiber composite, so let's take a look here. It, it has an all-solid end, and it is very rigid. In fact, it's basically 100% rigid, little to no perceivable flex in the stock. It does have that front uh, sling swivel stud. It has a relatively slim 4N, similar or reminiscent to a Model 70. It is rounded off on the bottom, so it's not flat like some stocks. So that is something to note. This would be a little bit harder to stabilize on, say, a bag rest or a backpack, but it's still uh, very good for hunting. In fact, in some ways, it's better for hunting as it's easier to grasp quicker in the field. It does have front bedding, um, and the recoil lug recess is bedded extremely tightly. In fact, it was difficult for me to remove the stock even after removing the front and rear action screws because it was so tightly bedded, which is a good sign. Um, it does feature that aluminum, or excuse me, stainless steel pillar bedding in both the front and the rear, and the bedding job on the rear tang is very good as well. Um, the inlay area is very nice, and I would say this is a very excellent lightweight hunter stock with a traditional slim design, as well as it appears to have an all, um, looks like stainless steel, uh, could be aluminum, but looks like stainless steel internal box that is um, ported um, to shed weight. So that's a very nice uh, piece as well. Hope you enjoyed this review of the Christensen Ridgeline in 300 PRC. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you back in the next review.